44 past the hour and joining us this morning, we have Dr. Nicole Clark for this week's Your Mental Health segment. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, yeah. Same person, different name. Many of you yes. know I got married recently. Uh -huh. Now going by Dr. Clark. 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 practicing Clark. 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 Dr. Clark. Now you uh, spoke with a national nonprofit that's equipping barbers and hairstylists with peer support tools to help their clients in need. Absolutely, and it's really remarkable. It's all about meeting people where they are. The goal of the nonprofit is to increase access and awareness. It's called the Confess Project of America, and it is our country's first barbershop mental health advocacy program. 4,000 barbers and hairstylists from across the U.S. have been trained as mental health advocates using Harvard University-backed curriculum. Entrepreneur and Confess Project founder Lorenzo Lewis says the program, which launched in 2016, is already making a difference. This has been life saving um, and that, you know, um, gosh, I'm glad I, I found a barber or someone who can hear me out. This is already something that, you know, a lot of barbers have said this is something they've already been doing. They've been counselors. They've been great listeners. They've, they've helped people from putting a gun down and not going to commit a crime, you know, explicit enough to say that they've helped people uh, from not dying by suicide. And so these are already comments that we've heard that they have already been doing. Now they're just on with an actual curriculum and tools and a system that allows them to really navigate in a very appropriate way. In less than a decade, the Confess Project of America has reached more than 4 million people across 32 states. The organization now aims to reach 120 million people around the world with mental health awareness, support, and advocacy training. Yeah, Nicole, this is such a fantastic program. What else can you tell us about their efforts? So I want to make a clarification. They are mental health advocates. They are not therapists. Mm -hmm. They don't purport to be therapists, but they have been trained with peer support tools, teaching, you know, active listening, positive communication, stigma reduction, and how to refer clients to a therapist when necessary. And yeah, this idea makes so much sense and so helpful. Yeah. What's next for this program? Where are they going? They want to be global. They mm. want to move into other countries, and they also want to add male technicians to their list of frontline mm. employees who are working as mental health advocates. The reality is that we will never have enough therapists to meet the growing need and demand for counseling services, especially now that more people are seeking treatment, which I'm very happy about. Mm -hmm. uh, but we really need an all hands on deck approach, making sure that everyone is aware of the signs and we can point people in the right direction when they need help. And since there is such a stigma, I think for a lot of people, this could be a good gateway mm -hmm. into seeking help, just having that initial conversation with someone who is trained on what to look out for is mm -hmm. critical. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the reality is we just want to be heard, really mm -hmm. heard and listened to. And sometimes that barber, that hairstylist gives you that undivided attention, that mm -hmm. little word of encouragement that can make all the difference. Yeah, yeah. it's so important. It's a great program that they have. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Clark. Dr. Clark. Mm -hmm. For uh, yes. joining us today. All right, we do have to take a quick break.